Hey y'all, what's up? Chad Wright coming to you here once again on the channel, Team Righteous. And today we're back in the 2025 Toyota Camry XSE. And as you can see right here, we just hit 20,000 miles on this 2025 Toyota Camry. So kind of kind of give a review of what I think about the car at 20,000 miles. Like I said, I am an owner of this car. I'm not normally a reviewer, of, you know, doing video reviews and stuff. So I'm not the best at doing that stuff, but this is my personal car. So I kind of give you a little bit of a heads up about what's going on with the car and what I like and don't like so far. It's all fun and games and jokes on social media, but this shit is dangerous. So I went over the five things I like before. Now I'm gonna go over the five things I don't like about the car. And I've had this list made for a while, just not getting around to it. It's been a little bit slow up there uh, in Nashville where I do ride share at. And I know most people, when they get slow, they do more videos. For me, the slower I get, the more I don't wanna do videos. So now it seemed to pick up a little bit last weekend and I hit 20,000 miles this morning. So I wanna be able to make this video for y'all. So anyways, number one, thing that I don't like uh, about this car, the EV mode. So uh, when you're going on the highway and stuff, you can let off the pedal and barely feather it and you can get it into the EV mode. So I'm not talking about that, but, oh yeah, and I don't have my GoPro, so if the video's a little shaky, sorry about that. Uh, it should do pretty good with my cell phone, but it's not a GoPro. Uh, but anyway, so number one, so the EV mode, whenever you take off from a stop sign or a red light or anytime you get below 25 mile per hour you can hit the ev mode and it will turn on ev mode until you get above 25 miles per hour when you get above 25 miles per hour it will uh it'll switch off automatically and then it will go back into the gas engine mode so when you uh whenever it does that right there if it's above where it says eco at, it'll turn the gas engine on. So you may still want it to stay in EV mode and it may still be able to pull fine in EV mode, but it won't allow it to do it uh, because you're above that eco mo mo spot right there. So I think that it should just stay on until and until you have to get above where it goes into the power mode because that's usually whenever it, it switches off if you are at say 15 mile per hour and you bash the pedal too far, then it'll switch off of EV mode. I think it should have just let it just do that. Uh, or when the batteries go low, stuff like that right there. So that's one thing I don't like about it. Another thing is I don't like about that same thing is, is so the brake hole, when you press it, turn it on, once it's on, it stays on until you put the car back in park or well, which would be also whenever you turn it on. So if you put it in park at all, it'll turn off the brake hole. But other than that, it stays on all the time. So every time you pull to a red light or uh, or an intersection where you'll be sitting for a minute, you just press the brake, wait till it says hold, let you put off the brake, it holds. Like it's done. There's nothing else extra you gotta do to it. With the EV mode, every single time you drop below 25 mile per hour, or pretty much every time you stop at a red light, stop sign, anything like that right there, you have to press that button again. So basically I just ride around with my hand, like right here on the console, to be able to put it in the EV mode every time. But man, when you do that there, you know, 40, 50 times a night, it starts to get old. And it's kind of like, it really would have been nice if they just could have left it so it would just stay on all the time. Uh, number two. So number two is one I see a lot in a lot of the the groups, uh, the Toyota uh, ninth gen group that I'm in on Facebook, uh, the Android auto glitches a lot. And it didn't take but about a week or two for me to just stop using it completely um, because You'll be going on the road and it'll work great. Like it, the way it works, it works pretty good. Uh, and, and what it does, there's a few little things about it I didn't like whenever I was using it, but it was something about, I think whenever you're, let's say if you go to watch a YouTube video while you're sitting there parked or whatever, but you had music on before, if you go to turn the volume up, it switches back to Pandora. It's like, bro, like I'm trying to watch this video here. Now, if you do it through Bluetooth, it doesn't do that. So that's one good thing. Uh, but you'll be riding on the road and say it's been connected for six hours or so. And let's say I do a lot of driving or if it's, say if you're on a long trip instead of just doing a lot of driving all night long in one spot. But 
whenever you're driving down the road, like after so long, it'll just glitch out and disconnect and you can't just reconnect it. Like it's not that easy. And then say if you want to reconnect to Bluetooth even or whatever, like I don't know that it'll let you do it while you're going down the road. Like a lot of times it won't or it's a pain in the ass to get it to do it. It's just really super glitchy. Uh, Android Auto, like even whenever I've used it in other vehicles before, when you had the plug-in kind, I didn't really like it then uh, because of the ways things work. And maybe it's because I want to be able to use Google Maps in my phone because I know I can make it work there. And when it's on the screen up here, it doesn't always seem to work exactly the same way. And so, and I've been using Google Maps for 12 years now. Like, like I just drove a lot of miles as a truck driver using Google Maps. So I've put plenty and plenty of uh, miles on Google Maps using it and going through all the updates that they've done over the years and everything, but still able to use my phone. So like, I'm really good at using it. And when you use it on Android Auto, it doesn't work exactly the same all the time. And it's kind of glitchy or, or even at that, I can't just pull up my phone and switch whatever I want to. And I guess what's what I like the most about it is like whenever I want to zoom out and in and look and see different things when traffic's coming up, stuff like that. So, there. Number three was actually number one on my things I do like about the car list was I like the fuel mileage that the car gets. It gets better fuel mileage than a non-hybrid car. And it still does, no matter what, uh, you know, especially the way I do drive it, but it doesn't get it as easy. So if you take a non-hybrid car and say it's advertised to get 29 miles per gallon uh, in the city and 39 miles per gallon uh, on the highway. Well, going down the highway, set the cruise at 70 miles per hour, drive for six or seven hours, and you're gonna get 38, 39 miles per gallon. Like it's gonna be pretty close to being right there on it. And if you drive in the city and drive, you know, and everything, and I've tested this before with the Corolla that I was driving before, and it got the got the advertised mileage uh, whenever it had the correct tires on there. It did have a little bit of difference in tires, which is the reason why I know some ways to remedy this, but, <clears throat> but it'd get around 28, 29 miles per gallon with this car. Now, the Camry hybrids, uh, especially the XXC, they're advertised the same as all the other trims except for the LEs, which get even more. But the XSE, uh, whenever you're driving, it's supposed to get like 47 miles per gallon in the city and 48 miles per gallon on the highway. Well, <clears throat> the best I've been able to get out of it, and which was really good, and, but this is like driving, it's like so much like a granny, finessing it, and I got 46 and a half miles per gallon. And y'all know I calculated. So it showed like 48 on the dash, but it's 46 miles or 46 miles per gallon one time, 46 and a half miles per gallon the next time. And that's like I said, driving it so soft and so gentle. That's driving like I just don't drive. And if I drive, you know, relatively smoothly and try not to ride it too or run it too hard it's okay and i can still get around uh around 40 to 42 miles per gallon which isn't the end of the world but it's not 47 or 48 and if i drive it where you know like i was driving that corolla before where you know if i gotta get somewhere i'm just gonna get there if i gotta get around somebody i'm just gonna do it you know, it'll drop down to 37, 38 miles per gallon. That's 10 miles per gallon off. Now, granted, that's it, you know, 40 miles per gallon or 40 to 45 miles per gallon. So that's not as much of a percentage, but still, that's like 20, like 20%, you know, that it's losing. And it's just a, a grave difference versus, you know, any other car where you just drive it and it just gets the fuel mileage that it should get, or at least pretty close to it. Like, it's not that far off and not even percentage wise like it's not that far off so that's like one of the things that really kind of bothers me about a hybrid uh but the le's like get great fuel mileage and actually get better from what i've seen get better than what's advertised uh so i feel like if i could figure out what it is about the le's which from what i gather is they got smaller wheels which are probably lighter and they got skinnier tires which are probably lighter uh than what's on here then I believe that we could get, you know, better fuel mileage out of this car. And if so, and lower roll resistance as well. But if I could do that or get something pretty close to that, 
I feel like we can at least get close to the numbers we're supposed to get without really having to try to do it so much. And that's what bothers me the most is it just doesn't get exactly what I was looking for. All right, know, so for. number four, uh, the XSE top trim of the Camrys does not have memory seats. Welcome to Mississippi. So, yes, and that's the reason why the road just got rougher. Welcome to Mississippi. <laughs> so, the uh, the XLE is the only car that has the memory seats in it. The XSE does not have it. Uh, not the LEs or the XL or LEs or SEs either. But like I said, definitely you would think that the top trim, the XSE, would have memory seats as well, and it does not uh, have it. So. I don't know on the XLEs. I do believe that it's just on the driver's side and not just the not even the passenger side. But either way, one, I wish I had memory seats because if I drive the car and my daughter is starting to learn how to drive some now, she's not really old enough to be driving like down highways and stuff like that over there. But I've taken her to the parking lots and stuff like that and let her drive. And when she drives, she's a lot shorter than me, so she's got to move the seat way forward. It'd be a lot easier if we could just push one and two and you know set set the difference. Also, the passenger side if I could have memory seats over there because they're power seats. And whenever somebody gets in the back, because I do a lot of ride share, somebody gets in the back and they need a the seat moved forward. Well, I have to unbuckle and lean over there and reach and grab it. It's not like, you know, even a manual seat where you just grab the lever and tell them, hey, push. You know, and it's a little easier. I've had to do that before in that Corolla. But this car right here, I've got to reach over there and like find the button and then push it forward to get the, get the seat to move forward. So it'd be super cool if the top trim would have the best features that the car comes with. Like, why does it not have memory seats uh, for that side? Because I would just set that side over there to be, you know, kind of forward, pretty good bit for a shorter person. And then, you know, if somebody over there wanted to move the seat back when they got in the front, I would just tell them, you know, just push number two. Or if there's somebody behind them though, it's like, okay, it's cool, just move it. It's power seat, grab it on the side. So anyways, that's just one of those things that it just kind of bothers me that, you know, I got the best trim, but didn't get, you know, the best features. And I do know there's a higher package than what I got. So I could have spent more money, but I wouldn't have got memory seats either way. Still wouldn't have come with it regardless. All right, so number five. Uh, so since I don't use the Android Auto, I don't use Google Maps on the screen up there. I use um, I use the Toyota, Toyota navigation that's on there. Uh, it works, it gets me where I need to go. It, it, it works. It's definitely not Google Maps. Uh, and here's where one of the things is, is one is whenever there's backups and stuff, whatever, it'll show it to you sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't. And it doesn't give you other options for getting around it unless you start looking for them. Uh, where Google Maps, all you gotta do is zoom out and it'll show you where a backup is and it starts trying to find you routes around it. Uh, two is it doesn't know all the places that Google Maps does. So. Google Maps, you just press the button or say what you say to get Google Maps to work, and you say, go to this place. And an example of this is like Hard Rock Cafe up in Nashville. Uh, it's at the end of Broadway, so it's like the easiest place to center where I'm trying to get back to, uh, and it'll go there. Well, if I say that to Toyota Maps, it won't do it. It won't just automatically go there, or it doesn't know it. It's like, we don't know what you're talking about, or we didn't, I didn't understand you. I'm like, how do you not understand Hard Rock Cafe? So there's a lot of stuff like that right there that kind of bothers me. And if it's a street name that I don't know or a street name that's harder, harder to pronounce because it could sound like something else, like it won't pick it up or it'll give you something completely different and you can't type it in. Like on Google Maps, if it's connected to Android Auto, I can just go to Google Maps on my phone, type it in there and start the trip. And then once it does, then it pulls it away from the phone and just puts it on the screen up here. But you know, the Toyota maps, there's not an option for doing that. So either it's got to understand you saying it or, you know, or you just got to put it in on your phone and just use your phone for navigation instead, uh, which kind of defeats the purpose of Android Auto or the maps being up on the screen, up on the radio, because it's bigger. So anyways, uh, that's my like top five things that I don't like about the car. But like I said, I love the car, man. It's a great car. Uh, the color gets tons and tons of, you know, you know, people loving this car, the Ocean Gym. Lots of people love it. Uh, it is, well, of course, it's unique, you know, and I get a lot of that. It's like, oh, I ain't never seen this color before. It's like, yeah, because it's a brand new color. 
And so people are surprised that it's a 2025 and people are surprised by the color and stuff like that right there. Uh, but like I said, I really do enjoy the car though. And I feel like it's still going to get better fuel mileage once I do make some changes. So I, I do love the wheels that are on the car and the way it looks. Uh, and by this time, by the way, uh, I've had two blowouts with the car. So y'all remember the one I showed you before. I had another one uh, at 12,000 miles. So the first one was like right at 2,500 miles or so. And this one here was uh, like right at 12,000 miles. So yeah, when you hit big potholes, sometimes I've, I've hit a couple of big ones that I was surprised it didn't take out. Uh, hit one the other night. It was, uh, it had me nervous. I was looking down to see uh, that it blow out, but it still held up. Uh, but yeah, these uh, low profile tires, like I said, they do have a tendency to want to, you know, want to pop when you hit big potholes. And that kind of sucks. Uh, so I have looked into, you know, some 18s for it instead of 19s and a little bit taller sidewall and a skinnier tire as well. So I'm looking at like a 215. Uh, like a 215.50, which I guess a 215.50 is really, I think, like roughly the same sidewall height. It'll just be a skinnier tire. Uh, so actually, well, it'll be more sidewall because it'll be an 18 though. But uh, but that should help me with fuel mileage. So if I can find a light enough 18, and if I can find a light enough tire with lower rolling resistance, and I think I've found one, I think we can get this fuel mileage to really make a difference. Uh, because even like the SE all-wheel drives, like they get better fuel mileage than this rare does because it's got 18s on it. Like, and it's an all-wheel drive, so it should get worse fuel mileage according to Toyota, but it doesn't. Like because of the, because of the 18s being on there. Like these wheels are just really, really heavy. So, uh, but anyway, like I said, loving the car. And for the one guy that watches all the time who told me to fix this rubber piece over here when I first got the car, I'm glad you pointed it out because I don't think I ever would have noticed it. Like, I just don't look, uh, don't look over there and never would have noticed it and everything, but I'm glad you, glad you spotted that for me. And I do got some more videos that I want to make. I've got uh, my second oil analysis uh, that I got. Uh, it already came in. I've done multiple oil changes since then. Uh, but I haven't sent off all the oil yet because, like I said, it slowed down up there in Nashville and uh, it costs, well, it doesn't cost so much money to send them off because I've already paid for the oil analysis, but I'm wanting to send off a few of them at a time because they're taking so long to get back. And Blackstone told me, he said, you know, because it takes like three weeks to get them back. Well, Blackstone told me, they said, if you will send them to us next day, which cost you about 80 to 100 bucks. But they said, if you send them to us the next day, they'll come to the front door instead of the back door. And we'll take those before we'll take all the other ones. And I said, okay, well, I was gonna do that, but I was like, man, that's a lot of money for just one oil analysis. So I was like, well, I'll just do two. Well, now I've got two of them here and I'm like, I gotta change the oil again here like in another week or so, maybe maybe a week or two. I've got, I gotta decide on how many miles to put on this week. But I got another oil analysis. So I think I'm gonna do three of them at a time. Uh, send them up there. That way, at least if I'm spending a hundred bucks, it's like a hundred bucks for all three of them. Uh, so it'd be like $33 a piece because I've already paid like $35 a piece for the analysis and stuff, but it does give you good information. And I at least want to get that information starting off, uh, from, you know, what we're getting out of here, how the motor's doing. The second oil analysis was really good versus that first one. The first one had a lot of metal in it. Metal in it and that's the reason why I tell a lot of people, you know, within the first thousand, two thousand miles, you need to get that oil changed because a lot of people are out there. Well, the dealer says that you can drive 10,000 miles on the oil before you have to change it. They told me the same thing. And I got up there at like 6,000 miles. It's like, oh, you still can wait till, till 10,000. And I'm like, I've already changed the oil once. What are you talking about? Like, I'm not waiting that long. You're crazy. I want this motor to last for, you know, four or five, 600,000 miles, if not more. Like, I put a lot of miles on this thing. Like I said, I've already got 20,000 miles. I've had the car for a little over three months and loving it. And I think it's going to be a good engine. I think it's going to get better. Uh, and I'm going to keep working with it, try to get better fuel mileage. Oh, yeah. Windows tenant. I don't know. You probably can't tell right now because it's from the inside. But I've got the windows tenant by Buddy AG. Man, there ain't nobody like Buddy, bro. Look at this guy right here done everything good. We got the, uh, the panel roof. He tinted it for us, too. And he's like, man... Cause I was wanting everything to be dark in here. And he's like, and he's like, well, he said, I would advise you not to go with limo tent up top 
he said, or 15 or 5%. He's like, cause you'll get a lot of reflection off the light and stuff in here. And, uh, I was like, okay, I said, I understand. I said, and he said that, he said, in Nashville is a, you know, is a city that people want to look up at and, you know, look up at the sky and stuff when you're riding around. And so I keep it open, especially at nighttime. And people, when we're riding through the city and I'm dropping them off and stuff, they get to see all the buildings, all the lights and everything. And they can look through here. Uh, and there's not a lot of reflection. I mean, there is some because it is, uh, it is a little dark in here, but this is like 15%, side glasses all 15%, front glasses 50%. Uh, and the front glass is like so perfect that you can't even tell that it's tinted because it's not too dark. Uh, what you see right here in the video, that's kind of what it looks like to me through the front, front glass. Like it's not too dark at all. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to jump off of here though. I'm here to pick up my daughter, uh, from school. So we got to get that done, but we're going to get back to it. We're going to get this video edited out and get it out for y'all. And like I said, I appreciate all y'all that supported me. Appreciate everybody that keeps subscribing, liking the videos, share it out to everybody in the groups and stuff. I know I'm in a couple of the camera groups. I know there's a few more out there. I don't know why somebody made 10 of them, but I think just one, maybe two was enough. And, you know, some, some other people want to make some more. So if you're in one of those groups, man, share this video out too. And we got some more videos coming up as well. We got some other videos. I'm probably going to go over some of the stuff, like I said, in here that I haven't went over yet because I've learned some stuff, how to change the dash and stuff. I just figured it out, how to switch my dash the way I wanted it to uh, a couple weeks ago. And I was sitting there fighting it, trying to figure it out. And I was sitting there like just literally part with nothing but time. And I'm like, why can't I figure this out? So I finally figured it out and I even watched another video and couldn't figure it out from what he showed because he didn't show what I wanted to see. So I'm going to show what I wanted to see and maybe it's what y'all are looking forward to. So anyways, appreciate it all y'all. Y'all have a good one.